in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed the Bible says two are better than one, for they have a good reward for their labor. Then the Bible says in Amos chapter 3 and verse 3, it says, can two walk together except they be agreed? Can two walk together? Two individuals, two companies, two pastors, two friends? Are we together? What are relationships? Write this down if you want to. Relationships are advantageous connections. That means if an armed robber stands close to you, even though he's close to you, that's not an advantageous connection. He wants to take from you. Relationships are advantageous connections that should provide mutual benefit to the parties involved. Advantageous connections. Are we still together? Advantageous connections that should provide mutual benefits to the parties involved. The Bible says, he that desires friends must first show himself friendly. That means friendliness is a harvest that comes from a seed of investing friendliness. Are you learning now? Please look up. The instruction, be fruitful, means be relational. The only way you are fruitful is when you are relational. From biology, it is the relationship between a husband and his wife that brings forth children the relationship between thoughts and your mind and the holy spirit is what brings forth superior ideas that are translated into products and services that are needed and useful every dimension of glory and accomplishment in the kingdom is relationship dependent please understand this the next level of your life is in addition to other factors largely dependent on relationships you may have heard me say this that who hates you does not matter you don't need to worry about who hates you but who likes you matters oh esther a king can like you in one day and you become queen the next oh joseph pharaoh can like you one day and you become prime minister the next are we together yeah relationships matter and there are principles of relationships many of us today let me challenge you by asking you a question and then we pray who in your life today do you have someone in your life today that if and when you are challenged whether financially spiritually or otherwise is there someone in your life today that you can wake any time of the night and say please i want you to arise and stand with me and that person will say with all pleasure i will do that for you if you do not have such a person in your life you are already sitting on a time bomb because not everybody thinks you are a big deal so you have to obtain grace by god we live we live in a world that is self-centered most of the people clapping for you are only clapping for themselves through you hmm. this is true Especially for those that God has helped to come to limelight. We have this deception that I am popular. We have this deception that people like me. It is not exactly true. Follow the thoughts of the wise and you will know. Jesus fed 5,000 people aside men, women and children. Is that true? And then the Bible records that when he was about to begin the process of his passion, not one of those people came around. When he was at the cross as recorded from scripture, it was his mother and John out of 12 disciples and apostles that he so graciously mentored and poured himself into them they didn't hate him but they loved themselves more than him 
so they ran away only john stood there with him do you know there are four kinds of connections as far as destiny is concerned that you need in your life let me summarize it very quickly for you i've done teachings on that number one you need divine connectors in your life divine connectors are men and women who do not have the physical wherewithal to help you but they know who can help you they are midwives they can connect you to the people the places the information that helps you an example was the little maid who was responsible for Naaman's healing she did not have the power to heal her to heal him but she knew a prophet who could do that and the secret to receiving from divine connectors is discernment and honor because they may not come in a fashion that is appealing a bus conductor can be the one God will use to hand over to you the poster of a program that will bring deliverance to your family so those who only honor a certain group of people either because of prestige or pedigree usually those people never enjoy the ministry of divine connectors you must master the art of honoring all men the poor the rich the downcast the nobodies because you are giving god by that attitude of honor you are giving god a variety of men he can use to connect you to your destiny helper it is said that everybody who rises is only four men away to your helper somebody knows somebody who knows somebody who knows the answer to your prayer but it takes honor to keep transiting from person to person if you're with me say amen are you learning wisdom this afternoon very important most of the things anything money can buy relationship can also buy it can i tell you this you are not doing well in your life if all that comes into your life comes only by money there are receipts for your exploits that should be written paid for by relationships money is not everything yeah are we together yeah relationships divine connectors number two you need in your life men and women of influence these are men who by reason of their competence their antecedents and by reason of their sacrifices they have become gatekeepers over systems and structures you need their endorsement and you need the leverage that comes from the honor that a territory has given them men and women of influence herein lies the pride of our generation our inability to see those who have paid the price and to accord them the honor that is due their sacrifice most of us feel that when we see people who are doing well we think god just favored them do not have that kind of understanding every time you see people who have so labored with the dignity of kingdom integrity whether in ministry in business accord them the honor that befits their sacrifices and that honor will open to you the gates of their hearts are we together jesus taught us a lesson zacchaeus was not a small man zacchaeus was a noble man he was one who you would say was walking in the cbn of those days are we together now and he went out of his way to bend over backwards to climb a tree do you know the kind of humility that would mean to climb a tree to see jesus when jesus saw him he said no i understand honor come down i've changed from where i'm going i'm going to your house your jesus was not ashamed to show honor i know sometimes we say we are all the same everybody is the same you are right but you need to be wise because many times you will dishonor the system that god has used to provide the leverage for the next 10 years of your life and your destiny can i tell you human beings are truly gatekeepers one man's signature can be equivalent to 10 years of laughter in your life one man's anger can be equivalent to 10 years of battles you may not die but you'll be wounded in a way that you will know that the earth has he given to the sons of men this is the world of men and we need to be wise the only place in scripture where the bible says to be wise as a serpent every time he uses the expression of a serpent is always to the negative but in teaching them how to walk in the cosmos he says borrow the wisdom of the serpent Are we learning you need men and women of influence number three very quickly 
you need gifted people the ministry of gifted people they are responsible for efficiency and time redemption you need gifted people more than sincere people heads of corporations pastors you a time will have to come when you need gifted people gifted people are designed by god to make the job easy for you if the axe head be blunt the bible says you will need more effort you will need more effort in felling that tree gifted people and the last and in my opinion about the most important of these sets of people you need are burden bearers burden bearers may not be gifted their assignment is not to move you forward the assignment is to keep you from going backward burden bearers are the men and women who love you more than your gift they are the ones who will cry for you and cry with you when you are at the cross woe betides a man who only has divine connectors who only has gifted people who only has men of influence you must need burden bearers because even if you are jesus one day you will be on the cross and woe betides a jesus who does not have his mother standing by him and john the beloved standing by him many people today in old age and in their retirement they die out of frustration and high blood pressure and all kinds of diseases because having invested in the lives of so many people they did not take the time to pray for burden bearers burden bearers have absolutely nothing to hide from you they are sincere people who love you you can be at home with them they are not people who stand with you they are those who die with you i'm praying for you may you find such a people in your life many years ago benny Hinn had a discussion with marilyn hickney a very old woman now in her 80s very great healing evangelist and she told him this about 20 or so years ago she said benny if you can find five of these people in your life you are about the luckiest man of god and he laughed because at that time he was at the prime of his ministry kings and nobles were inviting him now you know his, his, his situation when he had a problem with his marriage before god intervened it was quite a costly thing he lost half of his partners within a short time lost everything and all the people who were saying we will make you king now began to shout crucify him and she reminded him and he called and said you are so wise five was even too much i did not even find three I wish I would tell you times will not come in your life where you will need the ministry of destiny helpers. But even if you are David, there are times Saul will pursue you. You will need to hide in the cave of Adullam. And that at that time, may you find men who even though seeing you hiding, they will covenant with themselves and say, you must still be king over us. Even though you are hiding, we do not see you as a, a, a failure. You are... I have seen many people who have had a celebrity mentality and enjoyed flattering themselves that I'm so loved by all and sundry and then the reality of their humanity or something else just catches up with them at one point or the other and they are left alone there are many parents like that can I tell you this you have to pray especially at these times that we live in I've had the opportunity and the privilege to cry with people and wrap my hands around them and tell them look everything is going to be all right my greatest desire you've heard me say it aside from being a man of god is that god will grant me the privilege of being a shoulder for wounded people our world is an evil place full of self-centered people with godlike expectations over everyone and there are times when i know a man of god whose child later now was misbehaving and not doing well and you will be surprised the same people he spent his life investing in they were the same people who came and said shame on you if you cannot keep your own family then i do not think that you are qualified to be a leader over us you can imagine that pain over two decades of dedicated investment in those people the great also cry when they cry may you be the one they cry to that they can come to you and feel at home and can cry there are men of god who have come to meet me and some of them have brought charms and said i am not evil i was only deceived i came sincerely because i wanted ministry to work and the mentorship systems that i was under 
did not allow me to serve God acceptably. This is the truth. And sometimes they come thinking, I'm going to be disappointed. When you hear the way I preach, you think I'm holding a whip and I'm ready to lash everything out of you. But it is the apostolic grace that makes for that. My name means the way to love. And many times I hold on them and we cry together and I tell them, listen, rebels don't come to God rebels run away from God the fact that you came to God remember the prodigal son I will arise and I will go to my father and I will say father I have sinned against you and against heaven and I am not worthy to be called your son take me as one of your servants and while he was coming afar off the Bible says he saw his father and the father never discussed that issue with him he wrapped his arm around him restored his signet ring and called for a feast May you be the one person that when people are downcast, I have been with families that lost their loved ones. And you see, it's a very difficult thing when an anointed person, something negative happens to him like bereavement and the rest. How do you reconcile this with all the faith propositions that you make at the altar? Sometimes it can be very difficult. John 11, 35, the word, life, Jesus wept. Life can weep. Results can weep. The truth can also cry. Are we together? Many of you may be in that phase right now where it looks like your destiny has not yet evolved to represent the glamour that attracts people and everybody is despising you and ignoring you or perhaps there might be some of you here who maybe at one time or the other you've had challenges mistakes you made things that happened that should not be all kinds of things it is true that jesus died but he only died for three days while you are talking about the jesus that died resurrection has already happened let me encourage you that no matter what it is that you have lost if you still have like the vision that was given to the prophet if you still have an ear and two legs you can come back again the lion ate the animal and all that he left was one ear and two legs because if you can have the ears to hear oh dry bones and you can have the faith to take a step even dry bones can now become an exceeding great army but relationships are powerful let me give you an assignment I want you to write the following number one write the top five is something you can do at home who are the top five people that represent the inner circle of your destiny that means these are the people that you can say they are friends indeed there are three kinds of relationships broadly number one there are general relationships the Bible mandates that we honor all men. You go to the market, you meet a trader, you enter a bus, you go to the filling station. The Bible mandates that we are good to all men. Number two, there are seasonal relationships. Relationships that God himself brings to help achieve certain things per season. An example, your classmates. An example, your cosmates. An example, your tribesmen. Number three, which is the highest, there are destiny relationships. These are relationships that connecting with them is part of the systems that will be able to help you to live the fullness of your call. Destiny relationships. You cannot invest the same kind of energy to all these cadres of relationship. It's not wisdom. Are we together? So, number one, who are the top five people? Who have shown you the greatest honor in your life don't generalize them when people in this wicked and evil world when people go out of their way to make you a big deal to invest their loyalty their heart their all to you please be wise enough to recognize them who are the top five people today as a man of God as a business person who you know without flattery without any sense of self-centeredness they have communicated as a habit the greatest communication of honor they have discerned you not just as a person but as a gift from God to them number two who are the people who have shown you the greatest 
support system in terms of encouragement in terms of being there for you did you know there are certain people in your life when seasons are about to change here their prophetic word comes every time you get a text from them is telling you that a season has come to an end they may not be very close but god has connected the word for your destiny through their mouths you have to be able to know these cadres of relationship i would learn this um maybe a few years maybe five six years or so ago that was when i learned this that i cannot just invest the same kind of energy to everybody no there are people today who have gone out of their way intentionally to invest into our relationships they are honorable people indeed and i have been very unashamed to reciprocate that are we together there are people today if they hear that your house is burnt they will not wait for you to look for a place to stay they will say over my dead body may god bring those kinds of people to your life but may god make you that kind of person hallelujah i think it was um pastor david Obueli or so he was he was sharing a, in a meeting that 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 we had some time ago and he was sharing something like that i can't remember whether he, he preached it um, in the open or it was while we we're talking and he said how that there there, there was a man of God or so whose house got burnt. I think so. I hope I get that right. And then another one just came very quickly to stand and bridge the gap for him. And say, your house got burnt. There is a house, maybe one of my estates. Come and stay there indefinitely until everything works well in your life. Can I tell you, don't generalize that everyone is wicked because you've gone through so much pain. Pain can become so habitual, it does not make you see good in everybody again. But there are still a remnant of people. There are people who fear God sincerely. There are people who love you sincerely. Do not think everybody is just out to rejoice over your failure. I, let me attempt to round up. I was in a certain city not too long ago to preach. And when I was done, um, the pastor said, I'd like you to meet a few women. I said, what for? And he said, these are very successful women, seven of them. And that they decided as a covenant with God that because of how much you have blessed them and how much they love you, they have taken it as a covenant responsibility upon themselves that without fail, their assignment till the day they see his face is to pray for you. I said are you kidding me who are they I said please gather them very quickly let me see them and possibly go down on my knees and let them they are not failures these were extremely successful women who do you think you are that women will come together and covenant bind themselves with a covenant to pray for you and you generalize them no sir no sir no sir believe me as a man of God I love everybody but everybody does not have the same place in my heart. I'll be foolish doing that. Even in our dealings with God, he gave unto some five talents, some two, some one, according to their several abilities. There are people who Joshua Selman is a great man of God. There are people who Joshua Selman is, I don't know whether he's real or fake, who knows, they all this power. Let's watch. <laughs> and, 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 and please give them a chance. There are people who Joshua Selman is a wonderful man of God. I just love him. Nothing. There are other people Joshua Selman is a gift from God sent to them. Oh, you can't treat all these people the same way. Just like you, the you that everybody is trivializing. There are people who see you as a man of God and say, Sir, I know you are sent from God to me and I honor you as touching that grace. How in the world would you treat them the same way? No. Jesus didn't you are a centurion a man of honor and nobility I will come to your house and he said no no Zacchaeus come down I'm coming to your house when Nicodemus wanted to see him by night Nicodemus came to him a centurion I heard about one of the fathers of faith in this nation who could go so far to travel and go to a particular region just to see one person, one family, bless them, pray with them, encourage them, and return back home. As difficult as it is,
to get our fathers because of their schedules to honor a program or honor a crusade there are people today and i must confess to you even as a person because i live a very busy schedule you would think that because i have so many things to do there are no people that i care for except that one day you will be surprised to see a picture where i'm casually sitting with a family and praying and maybe just just sharing fellowship with them joshua selman i thought you should be at a crusade ground ask jesus what he was doing at the well with a woman who so honored him ask jesus what he was doing with nicodemus there are different levels of ministry honor is the determinant of those cadres of ministry so don't be surprised when you see the person you are trying to invite for a conference somewhere just sitting down and playing with children and you are saying but that time you are playing with them that's what i want no jesus was with the children busy jesus jesus who is on his way to die for sinners relationships for those of you who you only relate with rich people you are about to learn a lesson and god is helping you to learn a wise one fast rich people you have already seen their future but the ones who are coming imagine if the wine presser and the baker did not treat joseph well i wonder what happened to potiphar's wife when joseph became prime minister i wish the bible told us that they met one time and said madam your face looks familiar ah. we sing glory to god glory to god glory to god forever you see all of the things that I taught you are the support systems that a man can hold and his life becomes mysteriously powerful superior decisions superior belief systems extreme value profitable destiny relationships how do you fail when you are surrounded by this most of us in our failure and our regrets and our pains the absence of these factors may be responsible for why things have not been able to work for us it may be why we have not been able to enjoy grace it may be why you've not been able to receive the impartation we'll talk about those ones the matters of the anointing in the evening somebody today who would have given you a job but the day god brought you to the person you ignored the person because he was not wearing a shoe that looks like he's a rich man's own ah oh, great things do not come in the packages that are appealing you have to be discerning there are many ministers today respectfully speaking i know people who god is using greatly today who once upon a time there were no voices at all and these people had the privilege of profitable relationships but they ignored it because they were looking for other great men and today you're standing here tonight or well this day this afternoon and God has spoken to you about your choices God has spoken to you about your belief systems God has spoken to you about the need to contend for value value at a scale that makes you priceless you are priceless when no monetary amount is sufficient to reward you. Where everything, no matter how great, only becomes a mere expression of honor, not, a, not the true worth. There is no amount that anybody gives to you that they feel cheated for giving that much to you. You are priceless. 
Hallelujah. Are we blessed? And then finally, relationships. Listen to me. Take the today. One of your friend was not chosen. They came as a result of circumstances. And every relationships. It's time to sit down and unashamedly reinvent your relational profile. Not looking for rich people, looking for people sent by God to your life. Those who love you indeed. Those who stand by you and with you. Those who challenge you to aspire towards the things of God. I'm going to pray and then we wrap up this session and prepare for the night. Let's pray together. I'll give us two prayer points and we're done. Prayer point number one. I'd like you to mention all these four areas and cry for grace to engage them in your life. The grace to make superior decisions. Please make sure you are praying. Number two, the grace to contend for new ideas according to Philippians chapter 4 and verse 8. The things that are pure, noble, true, just, of good report, of praise to construct your mindset. Number three, the grace to kill and destroy laziness to be exceptionally competent exceptionally competent exceptionally competent and then number four the grace to attract to your life through friendship and through honor strategic destiny relationships that are needed for the next level of your life and your dominion please pray go ahead we're praying just a minute and we're done Shamakatoska de Brendega de Belekatosiata Shavrende Zezebakatoska Libra Haska de Balada Rubusia Marvelous God Haruska de Balanda Katapraski de Belekatusia ahead and pray one minute and we're done hallelujah last prayer point John 13 17 it says now that ye know these things john 13 17 now that ye know these things he said happy are you if you do them knowing them is not what profits you the grace to do are you ready to pray for that grace lord the grace for performance the discipline to do i obtain it from you go ahead and pray now that ye know these things john 13 17 happy are you if you do them Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And then if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.